Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brett Denton tonight, and we are on the music scenes. We're recording live here in the great city of Rock Hill, South Carolina. We're on SirBroadcast.com. That's S-U-R-B-R-O-A-D-C-A-S-T.com. As you see, they gave us these nice little cups to have. We're not allowed to take them home, but we definitely can use them, so that's a good thing. We're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about a lot of music. We're going to talk about local music, and we're also going to talk about different genres and people around the country. My co-host here on the mic is my good fa- friend, Anthony Lucky Luciano. How's it going? Oh, you know, it's going well, my friend. You're looking good. I uh, yeah, I like the Batman shirt. Thank oh, you, thank man. you. What's you get, uh, your, uh, you get your own uh, cash shirt yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah, I've got my cash shirt on tonight, and that's yeah. uh, to represent uh, cash or credit. So I'll take either one. Yeah. Anyway, this is for the late, great Johnny Cash, the man in black. Um, actually, you know, they called him the man in black. Uh, he kind of got it because he said that he uh, was uh, wearing black to kind of represent the... The poor man, the you know the uh, uh, d- downtrodden. Which in actuality, when they did their first concert, their first show together, the only thing that everybody had was a black shirt, black pants, and black shoes. So they kind of stuck with that motif. All right. Um, so tonight, this is our first time on air. So uh, you know we're gonna go through this and just kind of see how things go. Uh, any of my friends that are out there watching or listening to this uh, afterwards, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, this give is me your a call. chance to stop listening. I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you turn the volume down, go ahead and turn it back up. Uh, like I said, this is our first broadcast tonight. And, you know, we were going to start it off. Uh, I was going to air. There's a friend of mine that lives. I'm from southern Indiana originally. And uh, I've got... A good friend of mine, his name is Jimmy Dan Cummings, and he plays drums. Uh, He's probably the best drummer within 500 miles of southern Indiana. You go to Nashville, St. Louis, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and the guy's fantastic. Uh, He has played in so many bands, and I was lucky enough to play with him, and now he's, he's one of my best buddies. I love the guy. And currently he's playing with a... A young man by the name of Bosco France, and he is from Madisonville, Kentucky, which is a small town that's about, oh, two hours south of Evansville, which is right out in the middle of eastern Kentucky. And a lot of great people come from eastern Kentucky, Uh, artists like the Everly Brothers, you have John Prine, you have, uh, even around the uh, Kentucky area, you got Ricky Skaggs, even late great. Uh, excuse me, not the late great, the late, excuse me, the great Dwight not Yoakam. Yet. I know, right? He's my favorite. Shout out to Dwight Yoakam. Anyway, speaking of Bosco, uh, every year at Guitar Center, uh, which is a uh, nationwide uh, music store where you can go in and buy electric basses, electric guitars, drums, anything along those lines. Even myself, I bought... Well, heck, I bought this uh, beautiful Gibson J45, nicknamed the Workhorse. Good plug. Really nice. Oh, 100%. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, every year they have what they call King of the Blues contest. King of the Blues guitar. And really what they do is they go around and they have these competitions to sign the best unknown blues guitarist across the country. Well... Uh, A few years ago, a a guy from our hometown named Tommy Stillwell, who has played with bands called the Beat Daddies and have opened for Johnny Winter and B.B. King and Little Milton and Coco Taylor and places like that, people like that, he got number two in the nation. And he is fantastic. He is on fire. Uh, He's he's the best around, and we'll feature him on a different show. But right now, I want to talk more about Bosco. Uh, he's a very nice guy, a very soft-spoken guy, and his big thing is he comes out to play. He doesn't wear any shoes. Well, he ended up winning the 2012 Guitar Center King of the Blues competition, and it was some of the judges were Joe Bonamassa. It was Pete Anderson, who also played with Dwight Yoakam. They also had Elliot Easton from the Cars, and they had a whole bunch of uh, guitarists and he was sent out to Hollywood and he killed it 
And it's really great, uh, myself being a local musician from around that area, it is great that somebody could go on to do something like that. Because having said that, it's kind of hard to be a local musician. Uh, what, what about yourself, Anthony? You uh, Do you catch any kind of local music, anything like that around here? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not too... Uh and not too familiar with a lot of the uh, local music scene, which I hope that's something that I'll be able to uh, learn a lot more about over the course of the show. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's kind of it, it's kind of tough to get out there. You know, you're going to school and yeah. you're doing a lot of things, and even I myself, of, I got a lot, of, not a lot of free time, and I don't need, I don't know a lot about like where to go, what bands to watch. You know, I could go, I could go out and just watch, you know, random bands go out, and I I could not have a good time. You know. And I don't want to get off the subject of talking about Bosco, but that's how I found out about a lot of bands is I get these guitar magazines and I'll read about some of the people who are coming into town like uh, Los Lobos, which a lot of you know, or Junior Brown or uh, Bill Kirchin. Uh, there's a lot of those people that I didn't. I had never heard of them, and then I would get these guitar magazines, and I would learn about them, and then when they would come to town, I would go see them, and that's kind of how I got kind of hip to a lot of the uh, local local music venues and things like that. And we'll go into that a little bit later. So hopefully we can play the part of the guitar magazine in this scenario where we will be able to tell people about local bands and that kind of thing, who's worth seeing. Check out the big brain on I Brad. Know, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Good job. Man, this is not his first day. Oh, man, I am. This I'm, is my I'm, first day. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Ooh, this is both okay. of our first days. I'm sorry. Oh, no. uh, hold on. My phone's ringing. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's get back to the subject we were talking about. Yeah. Let me tell you, Anthony, uh, this guy Bosco, he is just fantastic. Super yeah. nice guy. He doesn't wear shoes. He doesn't wear shoes. That's You know, but he is from Kentucky, you know, and that's, yeah. uh, I think he, you know, kind of plays that role. I did notice when they opened for B.B. King, uh, when he mm-hmm. came out to meet, B.B. King called him out after the show, or during B.B.'s set, and, you know, you know the great late great or excuse me i keep saying that the great bb <laughs> king uh, a lot of people don't king. know that uh bb king bb stands for blues boy oh i um, did not know that he called uh bosco out and to kind of give him props and i noticed in the photo that bosco in fact had shoes on and i was uh, oh, well you know when well. something like that happens you know it's a big deal so along with uh, Bosco, uh, another good friend of mine, Jimmy Cummings, who I mentioned earlier, and Big John Rockner, who is a fantastic uh, bass player. I am constantly uh, sending him messages, and he's giving me heads up on how to play music. I Ever since I was 22 years old, 21, 22 years old, and going to bars, he played around uh, the Midwest area, which is Kentucky, Indiana, and uh, Southern Indiana, um, did I mention Kentucky, too? I think I, you might have said Kentucky once. I or, probably... Well, okay. it's worth mentioning again. Kentucky. Th- there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Cane Tuck is what they call it down Kane there. Cane Tuck? Yeah. So, um, I, you know what? Instead of talking, I, um, I'm going to ask the producer if we can go ahead and just bring up a little bit. This is uh, a little clip of Bosco playing out in Hollywood uh, during the competition. He was... Uh, I'll back it up here a little bit, and you can hear... Joe Bonamassa, the great Joe Bonamassa, kind of doing a little intro. Are you ready for me there, sir? Okay. Here we go. We'll just do a little intro. The Battle of the Blues 2012 hails from Madisonville, Kentucky, Bosco, France, ladies and gentlemen. See the producer, he's uh, he's really getting into that.
That was downright enjoyable. Oh my gosh, I know. Uh, if you're listening to the audio part of this, you uh, you won't be able to tell, but you saw it. He doesn't wear any shoes, and you know why? Because he doesn't have to. Yeah. I mean, really. Um, I heard that uh, they went out and bought him like a really nice shirt the night before he went and performed this, and I bet you he was just almost peeing himself, you know, getting to go up in front of that. But the guy, I mean, he's he's the pro from Dover. I mean, he yeah. is, you know, he's so professional and uh, he's so clean. And um, for those of you who couldn't tell, uh, just a little added, Pete Anderson was on the uh, uh, rhythm guitar with him and he played for years and years for Dwight Yoakam on songs like uh, Guitars, Cadillacs, etc. He also played a Honky Tonk Man and really all of Dwight's big hits. He is uh, a maestro in himself, and he also is a producer, so he, uh, since Bosco won this, he got to go out and record with him. He also got a, you know, a lot of gear, guitars. He may, I don't even know, he may have gotten that Les Paul that he was playing there, but uh, the guy's great, and he's been nothing but nice to me uh, since I'm best pals with his drummer. You know, I think by default he uh, he has to be. I appreciate that, Bosco, and uh, I love the bass player John. He is he is just a mensch, a real real swell cat. Yeah, sounds uh, like winning the uh, Guitar Hero 2012 Battle of the Blues is a good gig. That is a big deal because know. you know he's been playing. Okay, they played out in Roanoke, Virginia. They played up in they played St. Louis. They played uh, down in Cincinnati. They played Memphis. They played wow. Nashville. They play. I mean, Nashville's he's got pretty much as much as you can hope for. Well, him. I'll tell you, Memphis yeah. is kind of the place Memphis for blues. Is, you know okay. what I mean? It I is yeah. some old Beale Street, Jack. So that was uh, that is definitely a big, big plus. Uh, currently, I want to get them booked in at the Double Door Inn. Uh, I play with a local band called the Prodigal Sons, and we're a rock and blues band uh, out of uh, you know the Charlotte area. We played this weekend, as a matter of fact, here in Rock Hill at uh, oh. McHale's down at the uh, historic um, downtown area, uh, McHale's Irish Pub. We play there about once every month or two, something like that. Nice. And, you know, that's cool, yeah. but we played the Double Door Inn one time. And if for those of you, you know, we talk about local venues and things like that. The Double Door Inn has had some of the top blues entertainers over the years. Um, Eric Clapton played there in 1982. Wow. I mean, that right well, I know there. Eric Clapton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughn. Yeah. Jimmy yeah. Vaughn, the Fabulous Thunderbirds, Buddy Guy, uh, Little Charlie and the Night Cats, uh, Dave Alvin, uh, Low Straight Jackets. Uh, there's, you know, I go along the wall and there's like Johnny Guitar Watson and Little Milton Campbell, and it's just all of these people who I've kind of grown up listening to. The Who's Who. It is. Yeah. It is. And for those of you 
who don't if you don't know about the blues you need to get hip to them because the blues ain't nothing but a good person feeling down about the person that done them wrong i mean that's what it's all about right there sometimes it's life that does you wrong i know but you yeah. know what the funny thing about the blues are is when you play them or you listen to them you feel better you know a lot of people think that just because you hear blues you know you're it's you know all about oh uh, you know think you're listening Depression? to sad music you're gonna be sad. I mean, man right there yeah. jack we just listen to blues did that make you depressed i mean it, right now in your head aren't you like bang, bang, ding, 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 ding. so uh are you uh are you familiar with any kind of blues music i mean this is kind of a hub with what they call the piedmont blues which are real kind of finger picking uh type of music uh yeah, I mean the styles. Uh, the styles familiar, but I'm not terribly familiar with a lot of you know blues bands that are around here. So well, you know, I got to tell you, I really didn't get hip to the blues till I was around 19 or 20 years old. Because in Southern Indiana, back then, man, you know, it was it was all about the well, 80s. Maybe it's music. about time I get hip to the blues. I know. I was yeah. going to ask you about that. I'm glad <laughs> you brought that up. Uh, hey, what kind of uh, music are you listening to uh, these days, man? Uh, just whatever I can get my hands on, mostly. It's just some uh, just regular stuff. Like I tend to listen to, you know, kind of alternative or, I mean, I've alternative to what? Sorry, I always like to put that in there. That's just That's, a label. Yeah. You know what I mean? They kind of put that on music sometimes. Well, there's yeah, there's a distinction uh, as far as like you know, it's yeah, not I like know pop music or this and that, and I mean pop music's fine and all. There's people who like to listen to it. It's just, you know, whatever it, whatever works for you. Just, I'm yeah. all about that bass. That bass. No treble. I'm all about that it's bass. Have you heard that song? Yeah. Have you heard that song? Oh, my gosh, man. I wanted to hang myself when I heard that. <laughs> Yet I let other people listen to it. Uh, anyway, uh, I think, you know, all, all genres of music have really... Uh, have really been kind of coming to the forefront of music. You know, you hear a lot of blues. Uh, you uh, pop music is always there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I used to not really be that big of a metal fan, and I watch you know the me that metal show. And I'll tell you, man, I'm a closet metal fan. I uh, I definitely am a uh, a fan of uh, heavy metal music. Um, I don't own a lot of it, but yeah. you know, it's 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 weird to admit, but I'm actually a uh, I've actually been listening to this really strange uh japanese like all girl metal band recently. oh like, no 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 i'll tell you the japanese love there's some of tom waits called big in japan you know but yeah. they you know they emulate the uh the style that we uh we have you know the western uh uh, Western culture of music. I mean, they dig that stuff. They, cho you know, whether it's yeah. rockabilly, rock and roll, um, not too much country. Country. Uh, yeah, I can't really see that in my head very, very easily. I know, yeah. I know. It, you know, it. That's true. You know, <laughs> um, you know. You're speaking of music. Uh, the only kind of music, and I don't want to alienate any listeners or viewers or anything, but uh, country music is is one of those things that. It always seems to sound like popular music ten years ago. Lately, they've been kind of, uh, you know, they have jazz and blues that come together, and jazz and rock. They they call it jazz fusion, and they have blues and country that come together, and and you know, uh, you know what you mix, what you get when you mix bluegrass, country, rockabilly. And the blues all together, you know what you get? What's that? A rock and roll, man. Hey. Rock and roll. There you go. <laughs> and if you think about it, that part of the country, that Memphis is kind of that place. You got the blues and the uh, folk music coming down from Appalachia and Kentucky, places like that. You've got the blues coming up from Mississippi and Alabama and Texas. And then you've got the uh, country music. You got Nashville right up the road a piece. You know, you've got yeah. that. And uh, you've got all those styles that just kind of hammer together right there, you know. And you hear a lot of songs about Highway 61. Well, Highway 61, man, I mean, that's that's the route. That's how you get up from the south to uh, to Memphis. And uh, I'll tell you, we, you know, a lot of great musicians have come out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee. You know, uh, Elvis Presley. I mean, yeah. the king. The king of kings, you know. Uh, you also have Carl Perkins and... Billy Ray, uh, Billy Ray Li uh, Riley. Excuse there you me. Go. Uh, you also have Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, you have Roy Orbison, and of course you have 
maybe some of you can't see, but this uh, is a uh, this is a Johnny Cash uh, box set that I have. But it's it is segue. over the top. It is totally yeah. a segue. <laughs> and this thing. Oh, let's see. They did a limited run of twenty thousand, and this is ten thousand three hundred and sixty-three copies. So, I mean, I don't sell my stuff. It's kind of like my music gear. I don't sell it, but look at that, man. Is that awesome or what? That's Let's see nice. if we can get in. A, yeah. Get right in, in right there. there. That's Johnny. Everybody seems to like Johnny Cash. You know, you hear people going, oh, I don't like country. I'm like, really? You don't like Johnny Cash? Well, okay. Well, that's different. I go, really? Well, what about Waylon Jennings and Willie? Well, I like them too. I think <laughs> what it is is when they hear, do you like country? You know, they don't listen. I, yeah, you know what I, I mean? They yeah. don't really consider that. They maybe talk more about the uh, kind of the newer country that's out. And uh, so I guess, you know, I'm I'm really kind of focusing on blues music. I hope you don't mind me yeah, uh, hijacking this segment of the show. See? I, I know, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? You it's do. not like I have much anything planned anyway. Uh, that's all right, though. This is our first show. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to bring up... Uh, this is an original song, and I uh, contacted Bosco today about playing this. I, you know, I knew that that he would be okay with this um, because these are uh, friends of mine who have uh, who I played with or had the the uh, opportunity to hang out with. And this is an original song. This was recorded at the Slippery Noodle, which is in Indianapolis. Indiana, it's up uh, in uh, Indy, and it's on Meridian Boulevard. It is the oldest established bar in the USA. Mm. I believe it's something like 1885. It's been a brothel. Wow. It's been, you know, it's it's uh, uh, the name is great, Slippery New Lynn. Yeah, that's a- yeah, that's it, classic. Right it is, here. and if you uh, happen to look it up, you'll notice that the Blues Brothers are kind of their little emblem, and then right at the bottom of it, it'll say, "This is it." Uh, it's a great place. They have good food, and it's kind of one of those places like the Double Door Inn, which is a really underrated place around here. I, I think people forget about it. We got to play there last year in December, and it was a big honor for me. I mean, it was like playing the the, the Viper Room or the Whiskey A Go Go or Billy Bob's in Texas or uh, you know, place Max Kansas City, you know, stuff like that. Anyway, let's see if I can bring up this uh, Worried Life Blues from the Slippery Noodle. Let's see if we can find that. You know, you speaking about um, country music's actually uh, made me think. Uh, astute listeners to pop music today might actually notice a lot of uh, country themes and sounds being blended into certain songs. Oh, hundred um, percent. Yeah, hundred percent. They are. You know, um, there. There's a type of music when they don't really know where to put it. It's not all blues it's not all the way country it may have a little you know it's kind of like making a gumbo you have all these little flavorings that you can put in there and they don't you know when you put titles on you know that's one thing that artists hate you know i don't want a title you know if you think about it how many you know if you think about old country music you hear a steel guitar very few Johnny Cash songs have steel guitar in it. You know what I mean? But still, he's under the, that country label, you know. Uh, but they have what they call Americana music. And you have powerhouses like Wilco and Ryan Adams and uh, Dave Alvin and the Blasters and uh, uh, Hayes Carl and Reckless Kelly and uh, uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard and... Delbert McClinton, and you know, I could really go on and on about these different Tommy Alverson and Brian Burns. When I was down in Texas, I learned about all these guys. I mean, you know, if you're big in Texas, man, you yeah. you you don't even have to cross the state line, man. Texas would be your big time, you know. Just get get yourself on Austin city limits, or you know something how much. Hey, you know how yeah. much it costs to get to? Uh, how, you know how much tickets cost on Austin city limits? Tell me, please. Go They're on. free. Really? They're free. Really? Yeah. You just have to. It's kind of like I think it's like a Letterman show. You have mm. to. You have to stand outside in a line, and you know they only take so many people in, and that's you know you. how that goes. And you get in the crowd, and you fill up the crowd, and then they got a good show. They do. Yeah. 
and that's one thing good about Austin City Limits, you know, and we're just kind of, uh, you know, running around here. But, man, oh, man, you can turn on PBS sometimes on a Saturday night, you know, if you're not out, you know, kicking it or honky-tonking or, you know, throwing it down. PBS will come on and, you know, they'll have like a Roy Orbison from, you know, 15 years ago or, or a, a Willie Nelson from 1975. Actually, he was the first one to start doing the Austin City Limits and you just never know who you're going to get on there and just be in luck and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, it's, uh, they all have a, a Waylon Jennings or something. I've seen a lot of uh, unconventional acts that I, I wouldn't think about seeing other places on that show. Like, uh, I've seen Florence and the Machine on there, strangely enough, uh, which is a band that I do like to listen to. There was a band that I completely had forgotten that I'd only heard on an episode of Welcome to Night Vale, actually, um, whose song that I recognized from the show and heard them just in the, in another room. Just... It's a it's a great program for just getting out there and reaching wider audiences. I know. I see some. You know, I have to tell you, being an older person, I sometimes find myself, and I think we've talked about this before, I find myself becoming a little close-minded to new music, you know, and when you start saying things like, that isn't music, I don't understand that, I don't know what they're talking about. Well, As you know a young what? person, I can concur. <laughs> Well, you know why? Is because <laughs> really what they always say about that is you're not supposed to. That's the next generation that's taking over. And that's a little scary, actually. It is. Yeah. It is. You know, I hear them talking, but they're not saying anything. So um, I'm the previous generation now. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're always going to have, you know, there's two kinds of music, man. There's good music and there's bad music. And you always have, you know, you may have stuff on the charts. Just remember. Just because it's on the radio doesn't mean it's good. You know, you've got a lot of people that are pushing that up there. You know, uh, a lot of times you find uh, in local clubs around here, you know, I've seen uh, Unknown Henson, who is the hillbilly vampire. Uh, he's right here from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, he is, uh, he's a, you know, if you never checked out his music, it is just uh, fantastic and uh We'll talk about him some more on another program, but uh, you know he played the um, the uh, let's see the Visual Eye Theater, and it was it was fantastic. Uh, low straight jackets. Uh, they play all surf music, and they wear uh, Mexican wrestling head masks. So, and their lead guitarist is uh, Eddie Angel. That and sounds I've, like a good time, actually. Oh man, it was. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you go in there, man. You better make sure that you take. Uh, your earplugs because it was it was loud. But they, I saw them in Bakersfield, California, and I also saw them here. And it's just, uh, and that's All one right. thing people should totally go to uh, some of the bigger venues. You know, I was just kind of, uh, you know, you and I were talking about you know local magazine. I was just kind of flipping through it earlier, and I was just kind of talking about kind of. Uh, you know, local music, and I know we're all over over the place on this, or at least... <laughs> we're going to get back to Bosco in a second. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bosco, man, we did not forget about your brother. Um, but, uh, you know what? Before we talk about those, you know, let me just go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to pull up this. This is an original, and uh, I contacted him today, and he thought it was a good idea if I went ahead and played this. This was recorded at the Slippery Noodle Inn. Looks like you didn't have to wait terribly long then, Bosco, eh? Oh, man. I'll tell you, that's the place to play. I've been there, but they never let me on stage. I got the <laughs> shirt, you know, things like that. Uh, featured on the drums is my great, great friend, Jimmy Cummings. Brother, Blue, you're my boy. You know I love you, man. I talk to you about every day. Uh, you've been just a great inspiration to me. You're the first drummer that I ever played with. And you don't play for yourself. You play for everybody else. And you made it so easy on me. I I don't think if it was for Jimmy, I wouldn't be able to go out and play in clubs, man. He just, uh, you know, he just really helped me, man. He's, you know, he's not all over the place. He keeps the beat. He doesn't have, you know, a gong and a bunch of cymbals and all that kind of stuff around him. Man, he's just, you know, uh, straight to the bone. A really very limited set of... Uh, of drums when he plays. Actually, I think he got this from a good friend of mine, Jim Colley, who uh, also is a powerhouse drummer uh, from Evansville, Indiana. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this one up. 
Mr. Producer, you good with that? Go ahead and bring it over. Thank you, sir. Let's see what we got here. You going to enlarge it? Yeah. So everybody on the watching on the cameras, here we go. Hello again. <laughs> but it's still recording on the show, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Doing good. Look at us. You hear anything? Yeah, I can hear yeah, 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 yeah. You're back. <laughs> it's back to you. It's, we are on. Yeah, you are on. Yeah. So, as you can tell... Seamless. Man, <laughs> as you can tell, he is just... He's fantastic. I mean, there is no getting around it. Uh, I can tell what you're saying. It's a really great-looking venue. I know. It is. It is. I mean, there's a lot of space. Um, if you notice, Jimmy's got you know a snare, a tom. Uh, he has. He's very, very limited. He doesn't have uh, the cymbals really high. He kind of uh, is in the... Uh, kind of the school of uh, people like Charlie Watts, the drummer for the Rolling Stones, or Levon Helm, the drummer from um, from the band. Uh, the thing about it is, is that is that's kind of a jazz setup almost, you know? It's really limited, because really, I mean, I've seen some bands where they'll have 40 things, and some song they'll hit every single dang thing, you know what I mean? And uh, he's... Uh, I always liked his playing because it's just... And, you know, being a drummer, you've got the best seat in the house. Can you uh, bring that music up for us a little bit? Let's see. Check, check your end. Okay. 
See if you got the volume up over there. No. That's yeah, it. That's yeah, the there problem. we go. So this is this is nice. This is kind of lean back and nod your head music. All right, the video's so back on. See if you can cut it up a little bit more. Is it all the way up? Yep. Alright. And you can see what he's saying about the uh, drum, uh, drum kit, how he's got it set up. Well, there you go, man. I mean, there it is. Um, you notice Jimmy, uh, they like to call him things like Smiling Jimmy and uh, things like that. I uh, I think it's it's pretty funny. He uh, not only is a good drummer, but he also has really good hair. So uh, <laughs> my wife has even, even said that before. We were somewhere, and there were a couple of, uh, I think it was my friend John Perry's. We were watching him play, and... Susan goes, my wife, she goes, well, he does have really good hair. And then the girl <laughs> beside him, who's a wife of my other friend, she just goes, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, now's not time to be. Now's not time to be jealous. Oh no, man, he's my boy, Blue. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So I'll tell you, um, those those guys are just fantastic. I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, before the show's up, we'll uh, we'll find another uh, little cut and we'll play. And I, I really want to tell Bosco that I really appreciate you giving me permission to uh, to play your music. Yeah, good you guy, pr- Bosco. Oh man, yeah. he got back to me like that. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I'd really like to see him come to Charlotte. Just remember, if you come to Charlotte, man, I already told you, you Big John and Jimmy, we got you, we got you all set up. You, I live about six minutes away from the club, and you guys, as we say back home, come on. So, uh, anyway, um, you may, uh, you know, we talked about, like I said, if you look back here in the back, some of you people are listening to this. If anyone's out there listening to this, is this thing on? Anyway, uh, this is called Music Scenes, and I think what we can do is, um, well, I want to give, I know, right? Oh, I was just stretching out, man. You know yeah. how that goes. Getting limber. Out. That's it. I want to kind of mention some of the things that are uh, going on around in the Charlotte area. And there are some, some bigger names uh, that uh, some people may, may or may not be familiar with. One place is a really good place to go see is a neighborhood theater. Um, I was fortunate enough to go and see a band, uh, a blues band. His name is Tab Benoit, and he uh, has more of a Louisiana style of blues. And I got to see him there. Fantastic show. Um, coming to the uh, the neighborhood theater, um, they've got. Always somebody coming, Robert Cray or or people like that. Uh, another good one is the Visualite Theater, and the Visualite Theater is the one that I think I've been the probably the venue that I've been to the most. And at the Visualite, uh, I've seen Dave Alvin, and for you who are not familiar with Dave Alvin, he was with uh, a rockabilly band who uh, was out of. California, they're from down in California, and they were out during the early 80s when Rockabilly was kind of hitting again, and, you know, you're familiar with the band The Stray Cats. Um, actually, say, yeah. yeah, actually, uh, he is, uh, Brian Setzer, who's the lead singer, is coming here, and we'll talk more about oh, that really? here in a moment. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he is, he, man, that dude, well, okay, I'm, we'll, we'll get back to that here in just a <laughs> second, but it looks like on this month, the 28th, to the Visualite Theater, Junior Brown is coming. And for those of you who are not familiar with Junior Brown, he is he's the king of the Git Steel. And what it is, it is a musical instrument that is half electric guitar, and it also combines a steel guitar. So he can and then go down and play that. It's got a voice kind of like Ernest Tubb. He's from Austin. The guy is on fire one of the fastest dang players I've ever seen in my life. Um, and that is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's October 28th at the Visualite. Uh, there's a really good bluegrass band called Green Sky Bluegrass. It's coming 925 to the Visualite. If you like some picking and grinning, and you like to, uh, you know, sit down, lay down, hang down, take your shoes off kind of music, that's the place to go. Um, we also have the Double Door Inn, and I've always, always, always been a big fan of the Double Door Inn. We I mean, love you, Double Door. <laughs> oh, my gosh, because, okay, for one thing, wood floors, wood walls, wood ceilings, small place, awesome acoustics. I can imagine. I mean, it is. if you get a chance, you need to go by there, you know, and uh, all the greats are played there. The king of Diesel Billy, Bill Kirchin, is coming there. Now, if you haven't heard of Bill Kirchin, you have heard of the song Hot Rod Lincoln. My pappy said, son, you better quit that drink. Oh, I'm sorry. My pappy said, son, you better... You going to drive me to drinking if you don't... Oh, yeah. My pappy Lincoln. said, you're going to drive me to drinking <laughs> if you don't stop driving that old Hot Rod Lincoln. My dad actually had a uh, little record of that, and I used to listen to it way more than I am... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, okay. He is a guitar player. Well, up there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. So he became... He is now kind of went into that Americana. So he's... They call him now the king of diesel Billy wow. because he does a lot of truck driving, a lot of rockabilly songs, and he's fantastic. I've seen him at the All Good Cafe in Dallas, Texas. Um, I've also seen him um, in Bakersfield, California when I lived out there. Um, oh, 
Here's another one, Bojangles Coliseum. Everybody mm-hmm. knows about that one. Yeah. It, that thing's been around there for a while, hasn't it's been, it? Yeah, it's been there for a bit, yeah. It's been Bojangles. there for a minute, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, Dave coming? Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, man. I'm Rick James. <laughs> you know, he's coming. Dave Chappelle's coming there uh, next month on the 10th. You know, we were talking about Brian Setzer. Brian Setzer now has a huge... Uh, orchestra that he travels with and he said it's a little expensive I'm sure you can imagine but he well, doesn't do too much with the stray cats but he's got a full band with horns and you know all that kind of stuff and he's been doing a Christmas show where he does a lot of rockabilly hits and things along that that deal and uh, I've seen him before when he opened for Bob Dylan and uh, it's kind of funny because it had Brian Setzer's orchestra and then it had <laughs> Uh, opening for Bob Dylan and his band. That's it was pretty <laughs> funny. Oh, and of course, speaking of Indiana, some mm. old Indi- you know what uh Hoosier, you know they call people Hoosier. from Indiana Hoosier, right? You know what that stands for, What's right? That? Who's your mama, who's your daddy? No, it doesn't. <laughs> so anyway, sorry. I know. John Cougar Mellencamp is coming there March 27th, and um, I know he goes by John Mellencamp, but when I was younger, it was John Cougar, then he went, because they made him change his name, then he went to John Cougar Mellencamp, and then when he got big enough, he just went back to John Mellencamp, but to me, who always known. Um, The PNC Music Pavilion, formerly the Verizon Center, has the Black Keys coming. Well... I know, right? That's only about 15 minutes away from me. Oh, I mean, those guys, I mean, two guys. I mean, you know, the White Stripes are really good, but the Black Keys are really, really good. And they're coming here uh, December 12th. And you should definitely, definitely check those guys out. They are fantastic. They they play like a Bonnaroo yeah. and all those kind of festivals. You know, they, they rate. You know, they do rate. And they play a lot of, uh, there's a song, I believe it's called Sh- uh, Sh- Hmm. Shot. Oh, now it escapes it. me. Oh, yeah. Oh no. I think it's called Shotgun Sally, but don't quote me on that. I'd have to. I'd have to look it up. I think it's on my iPod. Kids, grab your grab your uh, smartphone. You know what? And nope. call in. Tell us what your. <laughs> tell us what the song actually is. Yeah. Make sure you call one nine hundred. We don't know what's going on here. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find that that. Uh, the name. Let me see. Um, look for okay, us here we online go. at nosituationalawareness.com. Stack Shot Billy. Stack Shot Billy. Stack Shot Billy. That is uh, the name of the song. Yeah, and you, can, it, you can hang up your phones now, kids. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you <laughs> saying that. Um, so that is uh, one of their big deals. You know, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of really good local venues that a lot of local musicians play that people aren't aware of as uh, also, you know, you got you Amos's me. South End, okay. which I looked and um, let's see who is. It's Sebastian Box uh, band that he used to be in. Um, Skid Row. Well, unfortunately, Sebastian Bach is no longer the singer. They've got a guy, Jimmy Solinger, I believe is his name. And he's out of Texas. You know, it's always kind of weird when they get a new lead singer you know they've got a lead singer for a while and they get someone new and then you know it kind of changes the dynamics a lot of bands have been successful steve perry left journey they got a new guy you know to find the guy they got onto youtube and went to a journey uh tribute band and found this kid and now uh he um now he's the guy he's the man you You know bands like uh acdc I mean, who knew? A lot of people don't even know that they uh, that they had. Um, um, oh, uh, Bon Scott. Yeah. You know, Bon Scott was you know, uh, Highway to Hell and Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. I always thought it was uh, Dirty Deeds and the Thunder Chief, which it is not. I know that's a completely different song. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I used to think uh, "Tiny Dancer" by uh, Elton John oh, was uh, "Hold Me Close and Tie Me Down." And a friend of mine goes, Brett, you are an idiot. That is Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer. But I've, I've heard a lot worse uh, mis- uh, mishearings of that song. I know, so that's, I know. That's rather tame. You know that song, uh, There's a Bad Moon on the Rise. You know, do, yeah, yeah. do, do, there's a bathroom on the right. Oh, boy. I know. I know. Funny how that works. Not really. 
Um, no. But <laughs> a few venues that you can go check out is um, you've got the Friendly Moose. You have McHale's here and Rock Hill. You also have um, Matthew's Ale House is another one that you can do. Heck, the uh, one of the, my favorite places to play is the the Treehouse Vineyards in Monroe. Who knew they've got a a uh, they've got a vineyard down there. Well, I'll be have yourself some wine, listen to a, I know, listen to some music. That's it, and uh, they have really good uh, wine slushies. Let me see um, wine slushies. Yeah, I know. Well, I know that's something you know as a male you don't really uh, admit up to. Um, I'm gonna let's see. I'm gonna play a little bit more here of Bosco before we bounce out of here. It looks like we're about uh, that well, time. Quite nearly. I don't know about you. I would. I have no shame in admitting wine slushies. That sounds like a good deal. I'm proud of you. Doing yeah. a good job. Maybe not right now. Getting a little cold, but maybe let's next see. year. I'm gonna pull something up here and just see. Nope. That is not it. Not quite. Well, we got to keep talking at least. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Uh, We're uh, not doing too... Okay, here we go. Let's see it? if this is the... Nope, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, you know, that weather we're having. It's, uh, first it's day out of there. Fall. Yeah. It's, it's out there, isn't it? I think it's the first day of fall, if I'm not mistaken. For real? Getting a little... It's like a couple days ago, you know. It's fine, you know, still summer. Okay, here, let's Get just uh, play a little bit of something here. Mr. Sandman, can you bring this up? Yep. Matt Smazit. it. Good job stalling for time, everybody. I think we there did we it. <laughs> Well, that's Bosco, and I'll be for, uh, featuring him again. Uh, you know, I think next week we'll talk a little bit uh, more about music, and we'll do more of a um, local rundown on some of the things that are happening in museums and uh, yeah. kind of local festivals, because there's always something kicking around here. It seems like there always is. Absolutely. I'll, Unfortunately, I'll sure the Panthers lost to the C Steelers the other day. Um, mm. Well, are you you, mm. a, you a Steelers fan? No. I, thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. Well, not thank goodness that I'm not a Steelers fan, but because they you know they won. But yeah, I know I, uh, I I'm a big you, fan yeah. of the uh, of the mm. of the Panthers. Um, I used to not be so much into football when I was down in Dallas and. Things like that, uh, but uh, here they're like the hometown team. They're yeah. doing good. They're doing bad. They're not doing so good. People support them. They're behind them, you know. And that's really what is uh, is important. Got to support your local team. I know. Well, or or not. I guess know. we're just gonna All go ahead people. and uh, take us out. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do a little guitar outro for us. All right. And we'll call Get it. Going. It. 